How is it that you can get your first job in web development or programming in general? What is the roadmap? What is the high level overview? What does it look like? I'm going to give you that right now from zero to knowing, from absolutely knowing nothing to getting that first job. A lot of people, they email me, ask me these questions. They're super confused, right? They're super confused. You might be like this. You might be currently learning Ruby, Python. You might have tried JavaScript. You know, most people that I meet, they, they've tried JavaScript, Ruby, Python. They clearly haven't seen my video on how to focus on one language and how important that is for your career. And this video is not gonna cover that exactly, but I wanna touch on how it is that you get from knowing nothing to getting that job. And it basically breaks down as follows. The most important thing that you can do first Step, and this is tried and true. I've worked with 11 students to do this exact method, and this is exactly what we do. I'm just gonna outline, and I have sub videos that go into the method itself, like well, certain aspects of the method itself, and I'll touch on those. So this method is pretty basic, right? It's, it's pretty simple. I like to try to use Einstein's maxim, keep things simple as they should be, but no simpler, simple as they should be right? You're just trying to get a job. It's not like we're building a rocket to go to outer space. It's as simple as it should be, okay? In 2045, the world's going to be much more complicated. It's going to be much more difficult to get a job. So, but right now, it's still not that difficult, right? Okay? So, keep things simple. Step one, we have to pick a language and a framework, okay? So, this is very important. You have to pick, and when I say pick, I mean decide on a language and a framework, now, I've made a video called The One Language You Should Learn in 2017. I'll link it below. Go watch that video. That's the video for this first step, okay? Step two is you have to complete the Advanced Beginner Challenge, which will give you tutorials that you're doing, introductions to the language itself. It'll give you knowledge and experience in that language, okay? There's another YouTube video. I'll link it below called the Advanced Beginner Challenge. Watch that video for a full in-depth look at this step two, okay? Step three, you have to have a website that, pack. I call this the packaging, okay? Just like a product on a store shelf, you're a product to a hiring manager, right? So we need to present you with your packaging and make it look squared away, make it look great. And I have a formula for that, okay? Is very laid out for you. It's not super hard. I make it as easy as possible and I try to make it such that it looks as high quality as maybe even it. <laughs> I try to make it so that your website looks better than you can currently create, right? And there's some tips on how to do that. So click that below. That's another video I've made on this portion of the, it's called how to build your first portfolio, I think, linked below. It's gonna really cover this it's step by step. So the step three in that video breaks it down perfectly for you, okay? Now, at this point, this could be a month later, it could be two weeks later, it could be a week later. You have, or two months later, you have basically chosen a language and a framework that you're going to get a job in and, master, and learn, right? Step two, you've done the Advanced Beginner Challenge, so you have some tutorials that you've deployed and again, the Advanced Beginner Challenge is actually now a real website. You can go to the uh, theadvancedbeginnerchallenge.com or advancedbeginnerchallenge.com. They'll both go to the same place. Uh, and you can actually start that email course, and I walk you through all of this. Uh, in fact, if you join that email course, I'll walk you through this whole process without you having to watch these videos. Um, but it's still important to watch them because it gives good information. So. At this point, you've done the Advanced Beginner Challenge, which means you have experience with the language, you've deployed tutorials, you have a website, okay? Now, on the website, we have a projects page. In the projects page, we put the tutorials that we deployed in the Advanced Beginner Challenge. So step two, we deploy tutorials. It's part of the challenge. We're gonna take those tutorials and put them on your projects page on the website that we created in step three. Again, videos below. That's step four. So now this projects page is, all, page is all fleshed out with your projects that you've deployed yourself. You have the code up on GitHub. It looks beautiful. You look very professional. The packaging looks great. 
In step three, I'll walk you through how to create a, in that video, I'll walk you through how to create an about page, contact page, so don't stress out. Just watch that video and create the rest of your website, okay? So step five, create a few blog posts. Again, these are the same steps I do for all my coaching students, the 11 that got the jobs, right? And 12 coming here soon. Step five, blog posts. Two blog posts at minimum, okay? You need to basically have, so if you want a Ruby on Rails job, I need you to write two blog posts at minimum about what you've learned so far with Ruby on Rails in some capacity, it could be anything. What you learned building those tutorials, what you learned the other day, like it could be anything. Just, I need you to write them. I don't care how bad your writing is, et cetera, et cetera. Just do it, okay? Two, if you wanna be a front-end JavaScript developer, in Ember, again, front-end people, when I say pick a language and framework, I literally mean you have to pick JavaScript Ember, JavaScript Angular, JavaScript Vue, JavaScript, like you have to, okay? The jobs are different. Their jobs are so varied and different. So it's, it's very important to do this. Now, step five, you've got uh, the projects on the projects page and you, you're starting to list them out, right? So you're putting screenshots, you're putting links, even to the project, you're putting the GitHub links as well. And this is step five, I think we're on step five. We just filled out the projects page, okay. So at this point, like the whole website is done. This is when I tell my coaching students, we are now ready to start applying for a junior position. If you want a junior position, um, guess what, I have news for you. That's all it takes. What I just described from, it's that simple. Okay, stop overcomplicating this. Stop overcomplicating this. Pick a language and framework. P have a goal, goddammit. Stop jumping around so much. And again, watch these videos below for each of these steps. It's really gonna help you a lot. Um, but again, just to summarize, and then we'll move on to the next phase. Just summarize. Pick a language and framework. Do the Advanced Beginner Challenge. Get some experience with that language. Deploy tutorials. Step three, website. Build it out. Step four, um, I don't know, projects page. I forget all the steps, but the point is <laughs> you're gonna have a website with a projects page with tutorials that you've deployed. You're gonna have everything in it. The packaging of your brand is gonna look great, okay? Step six is like an optional step that I do with some of my students, which is Twitter. You really want to, oftentimes, it can be a benefit to have Twitter. So one thing that people forget, and this is very important, but people forget, um, you and your brand are your biggest competitive advantage. You and your brand, meaning like your personality, your your so your lit. If you don't want to be super formal about what the definition of a brand is, a brand a good way to think of a brand is the reduction of fear via familiarity. So a brand is the reduction of fear via familiarity. So if I see my friend on Twitter ten or I see a company on Twitter ten times. I recognize that brand more because it's familiar to me. It's reduced fear of me and familiar to me. So for you, you can think of yourself that way. How do you expose your brand to other people? Just be familiar, just be around them so that they're familiar with you. And what does that mean? Twitter. Twitter is great for that, guys. Twitter, so important. So expose your personality on Twitter. Very simple. I mean, you don't have to be douchey or salesy or just be yourself on Twitter, okay? Caveat, don't be like your total self. Be professional plus personal. And in fact, the equation should be personal then professional. Twitter is a very personal platform. Be personal with the caveat of being professional, okay? Because employers and stuff like that, they're going to read this stuff. Um, so now this is step six, this optional Twitter step, right? Optional. But so far you have your website, blog posts, you have the projects deployed, you have the advanced beginner challenge done. You, you're ready to go. At this point, I work with students to apply for jobs. Okay. At this is it. This is all we do. Okay. Apply for jobs, junior position. Sorry. I should say this is for junior positions. Okay. You're very likely to get, if you do everything that I just described, telling you, I'm dead serious. If you do everything I just described, you're like, well, so I can just give you the stats, you know, you'll get a position if you go to 10 interviews. That's for damn sure. And most people, 10 interviews sounds a lot, seven 
is the average in my it's a small sample size 11 people but this works okay seven interviews with this portfolio of items that this this roadmap that i've laid out to you seven interviews and you'll get one because you're a standout person with an awesome site that exposes your personality and and i'm going to give you tips also in future videos on how to do interviewing and uh, various psychological things we can do in the interview itself right but i just want to this is this video is just the the high level roadmap right so now we're applying for jobs okay after step six so we're applying for jobs and again i don't have these videos created so i'm just going to show you the steps and then i'll fill in the videos later right so we're applying for jobs we're sending out i usually have my students send out literally a hundred a hundred resumes personalized job applications personalized like with a nice cover letter one paragraph you know in a specific format that i recommend but that's not that important personalized a hundred in like three days i mean we're talking eight hours a day of work and some of my students don't have that much time so we do like a hundred in two weeks and the point is we need maximum amount of people to respond it's a numbers game all of life is a numbers game guys all of life is a numbers game people that are successful have just failed and gotten up more times than you okay so we have all these uh, job applications personalized blasting out this is hard this might be the hardest part even harder than learning the language <laughs> people hate doing this but i have all of them all do it and we get like 50 responses which is pretty good you know because they're doing personalized and stuff like that in their junior roles so it's not that hard to get a junior role right um and sometimes they don't have a hundred places to blast sometimes that you know one of my students lived in the middle of nowhere and we there was a city nearby but it was a smaller city and we could only do like i think it was 35 blasts so do whatever your location allows for wherever you're trying to get your job whatever city um you know if you don't have a hundred places to blast don't blast them um, again, personalized blast though, personalized. Now, you've you've gotten the 50 responses or so, or the half or three or quarter responses normally, I guess. And then um, you want to basically get on the phone with these people as quick as possible. So step seven is to get on the phone immediately. So get on the phone as quick as possible, okay? Now, key this is the requirement for this is the phone intro call is the step one of every company's hiring process okay on this call it's very simple all you have to do is be enthusiastic and positive that's it that's it you don't have to be anything else you don't have to be genius super senior genius all you have to do and they aren't gonna ask you any crazy questions they're just literally gonna ask you hey um, why do you want to apply for this job? This is it. I saw that you applied. Thanks for applying. What what makes this interesting to you? I saw your background something something. Do you would you be interested in moving here? Or, so you're interested in it? like that's the kind of conversation, right? Sound positive. Stop mumbling. Okay, I, I'm not going to go into a personal story, but I I had a really strange experience with somebody mumbling on a job. Like I recommended this guy for a position within our company and um one of the most high quality front-end programmers i've ever met in my life but he got on the and i taught i hyped him up because he's that he is that good by the way i hyped him up like crazy um and you know <laughs> he got on the call and it was just man it was like you know how people are sometimes it was like it's like you couldn't even hear him you know and when you could hear him it was not a lot of communication it was just short sentences like oh yeah i did that and it was the so guys this is a formula for not getting a job that's a formula for not getting a job i'm telling you be on the first phone call i coach my students sound like i'm talking right now a little bit dialed back <laughs> but sound energetic positive that's it if they ask you why you wanted to work there be like oh you know you know do research okay before you get on the phone call do research on the company oh you know i really liked this aspect oh yeah i really like this aspect you know i'm, I'm looking at moving 
Um, and one thing I do is I coach all my, I tell all my coaching students to say that they're freelancers, even if they aren't on that first phone call. Okay. I literally tell them this is, this is key. This will get you just pushed right through. So I tell them to say, and use this language exactly. Oh, you know, I was doing a lot of some freelancing and this could be like one freelance project you did for your mom. Like, oh, I was doing some freelancing, but you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm looking to really grow my technical skill set, And so I'm thinking that instead of freelancing, I'd love to join a company to learn more about the industry, uh, what the industry standards are and best practices and how other engineers work as well. And this type of an answer, boom, right through, right through the first phase guys, right through. And don't lie, by the way. So do try to do like one WordPress site for somebody, just f even for free so that you can say that, okay? Because that's woohoo right through. I'm telling you 100% time. <laughs> I have data, right? So, and um, okay, so that, that's step seven. Step eight is like a technical interview. I have a podcast for technical interviews, how to deal with this whole thing. I'm gonna link it below, Josh Duty. Uh, is a good buddy of mine. He did a great job on this podcast explaining exactly what to do in the technical interview. Okay, I'm gonna link that below as well. That's it. After that, you should have the job. Um, a lot of our students, they get a job application after seven interviews. You know, So this interview, this step eight where you go to the technical interviews, that's gonna happen again and again. So it's gonna go like this, but eventually you're gonna get the job and it's really exciting. So I know a lot of students um, are confused. So I hope this roadmap that I just gave you kind of laid out the foundation of how, uh, what the stepping stones are, right? If you don't see the stepping stones in life, then you can't advance. I love this metaphor. I don't know where I heard it, but if you, here's a stepping stone for a career, right? If I don't see these stones, how is it that I'm going to hop from one to the other? How can I do that? It's impossible. You have to see the stones before you hop like skip some and hack it and people always forget this in everything they do this is why i start my advanced beginner challenge.com go to it check it out it's amazing this is why i start it with context just reading tutorials because people forget if you don't see the stepping stones you can't hack it and if you are hacking it without seeing the stepping stones you're kind of like stumbling that does work often um but you know, there's risk associated to that and an unnecessary risk because you could watch a video like this where I lay it out, right? With data from seven, from 11 people, a small sample size, huge grain of salt, but still, come on. This is the, this is what I use to work, you know, <laughs> to work everywhere that I've wanted to work. <clears throat> I'm telling you, this is a great formula and this is a great roadmap. The real important parts of this roadmap that are unique to me and my processes are the parts before the phone call, before the intro phone call. Everything after that is kind of generic, is going to happen very similarly, but my pick a language framework, advanced beginner challenge, all this type of stuff, this is going to expedite you getting a job. I mean, we're talking months instead of years, okay? We're talking months instead of years. Now, go check it out, advancedbeginnerchallenge.com. It might help you. All the links to all the cool videos below for each step, do check those out as well. Thanks so much, guys. Message me or Twitter me at D-A-I-N-M-I-L-L-E-R. Email me, miller.dane, spelled the same way, at gmail.com. If you have any questions at all, happy to help. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.